Welcome back to Simplo School. Today, we will discuss audit risk and materiality. This is a very relevant topic on the CISA exam. We will talk through the different types of audit risk, including inherent, residual, control, detection, and overall audit risk. To start, what is audit risk? Audit risk is a risk that information collected throughout an audit may contain material weaknesses that may go undetected. Now you may ask, what is a material weakness? A material weakness is classified by erroneous financial reporting as a result of flaws or gaps in one or more areas of a company's internal controls. And once again, the different types of audit risks we're looking at here are inherent, residual, control, detection, and overall audit risk. Starting with inherent risk. What is inherent risk? Inherent risk is a risk exposure of an organization before controls or other mitigating factors are in place. Simply put, inherent risk is the risk before applying controls. Let's look at an example. A critical business department with a large number of users. Due to the large number of users, there is inherently more risk. And here are some additional considerations for inherent risk. Inherent risk comes directly from the business nature itself. That being said, if the business is in a high risk area, it's likely that you will see a high level of inherent risk. Next up, residual risk. Residual risk may not be in the CISA manual, but I've seen questions about residual risk before. What is residual risk? Residual risk is the risk that may remain after implementing controls. Let's look at an example. A password policy which requires a total of eight characters. The password policy is a control. Just because a control is in place doesn't mean that there's no risk anymore. We implement controls to mitigate risk. So technically, there is residual risk that exists even when a password policy is put in place. Another thing to remember about residual risk is residual risk is also known as net risk. Next, let's look at what control risk is. Control risk is the risk that a material error may exist without being prevented or detected on a timely basis by active internal controls. Simply put, control risk is the risk of ineffective controls. Let's look at an example of a control risk. A manual review of transaction logs, which miss large volumes of information. The control designed here deals with a large volume of logs. And if someone is manually reviewing a large volume of logs, there may be human error. Because this control is designed poorly, we would say this has a high control risk. A few other things you have to pay attention to with control risk is control risk is deemed high when the control is weak. Additionally, if you have ineffective controls, control risk is likely. Moving on to detection risk. What is detection risk? Detection risk is the risk of an auditor failing to detect material errors or misstatement that occurred. Simply put, detection risk is the risk of an ineffective audit. Let's look at an example. An auditor using an incorrect audit testing method would be classified as a detection risk. Because the auditor did not select the right testing method, chances are he or she may not be able to detect risk appropriately. A few other considerations are detection and risk normally results from fraud or error. Additionally, implementing strong controls and or proper statistical sampling will mitigate detection risk. Lastly, overall audit risk. Overall audit risk is the probability that financial reports and or information may contain material errors. Simply put, overall audit risk is the combination of inherent, detection, and control risk. An example of this is a critical business with a change management process subject to controls and audited. Depending on many of the previous factors we discussed, there may be inherent or detection or control risk present. There may also be a combination of all three. One thing to remember is the objective of creating an audit approach is to limit the overall audit risk to a low level. Here is a summary of the audit risks we discussed. Keep this in handy moving forward.
Now I think that you're ready for some questions. Let's give it a go. Question number one. The risk that controls implemented may not prevent, detect, or correct invalid input data on a timely basis is an example of D. Control risk is the correct answer because the risk in the question pertains to ineffective controls. Question number two. An auditor did not engage and communicate well with the client's management during the audit planning phase. Which audit risk is most likely to be present? Think through the possible answers and what risk occurs when there's an ineffective audit. If you selected B, detection risk, you are correct. This is because detection risk is the risk of an ineffective audit. Question number three. A company which has a large volume of transactions that involve large cash volume will likely bring higher what? If you selected A, inherent risk, you are correct. This is because the risk of large cash volume exists before controls are implemented. Question number four. Management failed to make sure there is a proper segregation of duties between personnel. This will most likely result in a blank risk. If you selected C, you are correct. Management failed to implement the correct control. Therefore, this is most likely a control risk. Question number five, which of the following types of risk is normally high due to a large number of users affected by a business activity? If you selected B, you are correct, inherent risk. This is correct because the risk, which is the large number of users, exists before controls. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure you press like and hit subscribe as I will be posting more content soon. Thank you very much.